Hi, everyone. Welcome to Survival Jobs, a podcast in collaboration with Broadway World. My name is Samantha Dawn Titzolo, and this is Jason A. Coons. Hey, Jason. Hey, Samantha Dawn Titzolo. How are How's you? Jinx. Good. Just, yeah, jinx. <laughs> Owe me a soda. Um, no, just, you know, busy as always. How about yourself? How's your survival job, Jason? Uh, stressful. <laughs> Stressful. You know? and now I have this little guy with his fresh haircut. Oh, Ziggy. Me. For those of you just listening, Jason has the cutest dog. His name is yeah. Ziggy. He's so fluffy and he does look fresh AF with his haircut. Yeah, he just got a haircut. So for those who are watching the video, you can see Z looking sharp for the Ziggy ladies with out the there. <laughs> yeah. Jason, I have to talk to you. I recently started watching this Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix. Have you watched? Yikes. Um, no, I, I, I'm very torn on watching. I have a lot of so, opinions. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have to tell you, I watched the first two episodes and I think I can no longer watch. Why? Because it makes me sick. <laughs> Not- yeah, I believe that. It is, like, no spoilers to the listeners. I mean, it's a true story. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Okay. So, Evan, what's his name? Evan oh, Peters. Evan Peters, yeah. Is a phenomenal actor. Like, I was watching this guy's performance and felt sick to my stomach. And I just am so conflicted on continuing to watch. Because it made me yeah. ill. But it is like I've been reading all of these articles and seeing all these things on social media saying that it is like the number one streamed show on Netflix ever. Oh, ever, really? Ever. And also Ryan Murphy in the same week had this show be number one and then a movie, which the name is slipping my mind, also on Netflix, number one. This guy is crazy. Ryan Murphy, like, what, yeah, does he go to sleep? Like, I can't even do my survival job and this podcast, and also maybe go for a run. Like, how well, he has he a lot of he has a lot of help, so and a lot of money, yeah, <laughs> a lot of money, a lot of help. Like, I hate yeah. that meme that's like, oh, you have the same amount of hours in the day as Beyonce. And I'm like, well, Beyonce has a personal trainer and a chef and chef? a nutritionist and nanny and fourteen personal assistants, so. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for saying that because sometimes I am too hard on myself and I'm like, gosh, I'm not doing enough and I'm too stressed and X, Y, Z. But you're right. We at this time are just a one one person band. Yeah. And please, Beyonce fans, don't come for me. I was just uh, just, oh. just, uh, just hi- highlighting the difference between <laughs> the queen and the rest of Oh my gosh. I, put on, <laughs> I never put on survival jobs. There we go. Hmm? I didn't put on our survival jobs background. Oh, it's all right. There it is now. Um, <laughs> there it is now. And my phone just went off. Sorry. It's all right. It's life. Um, no, but I've been I've been torn about watching and not watching uh, just because I've heard how good it is. And Evan Peters is a phenomenal actor. Um, I love him and like everything he does. But I guess it just comes to the point where a lot of the family members of the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer were like really upset because they weren't contacted. And it's not the first um time the story has been depicted in recent times it has been like i think like 12 other documentaries and movies and stuff and they then the families of the victims feel like every time there's a new release they're kind of having to relive this awful awful thing like can you imagine losing someone you loved and like every couple years getting reminded and i think there's like a really big court scene um which one of the victims is sisters like because at the court stream was like live back then or like it was filmed back then and like released and like they got someone obviously an actor to portray the the sister and she was like it was like reliving that again like seeing herself like seeing someone saying her exact words like looking like her was like really traumatizing and um so i guess i've been really torn about watching it but like i don't think it's important to, to to remember those things and you know, I think the difference. I'm sorry, I'm going on a long tire no. on this, but I think the difference and why I was uh, why I was thinking about watching it was because, like, 
for example, the police really failed a lot of the victims because, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer was a a white man um, and he was, he got away with this because like all of the police, like believe whatever he said, like there's a famous case of like the little Asian boy who was like one of his victims who was like 14 years old and who had escaped and the police like sent him right back to Jeffrey Dahmer. This was the episode that I stopped watching. Oh, was that? I was like, I think I have to take a break or be done. Yeah. He's like, this Um, is my boyfriend and he's wasted. And the neighbors are like, this is a child. Like the neighbors are there and they're like, hey, police, this is a child. Like, I don't think he's drunk. And they were like, yeah. ma'am, that's his boyfriend. And he, I mean, I don't know how accurate the show is. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. They, he, he like brought the police officers into his home and was like, look, there's photos of us. Like, this is our home together. And the photos yeah. were like a Polaroid of the kid, like, naked laying. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, which highlights the homophobia and the racism that, um, Allowed Jeffrey Dahmer to, to attack what like over thirty victims, I mean, mostly men of color. Seventeen, 17 well, whatever, too many. <laughs> Seventeen, because I like I googled a lot. I have not watched the whole thing, but I was like, what? Is yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So I've been on the fence, but I've been I'm, I might check it out because I I think I need to be more educated before I speak. I mean, I've been speaking so much about it, but I've been reading, yeah. Yeah. I've a lot of reading and a lot of listening. Um, yeah. So don't... yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to pick it back up. It's, it's heavy. It's, it's heavy and it's sick. It made me feel like I, but uh, it's so hard to talk about this. I say, but that's when you know that they're they're doing they're sh- they're portraying it right. And I don't know if there's a yeah. right way to portray this when I actually my body feels ill yeah. <laughs> from watching this. So I did just want to speak about that because it is all over. I feel like everyone's trying to watch or watch or people are like, I cannot. My mom binged it yeah. because she would, like oh, wow. lived through it actually happening. So she was like, I was so sick watching it, but I lived through it and I just I, I couldn't stop. Yeah, I remember being a kid and like <laughs> it's not funny, but my older cousins would like scare me. They'd be like, Oh my god, Jeffrey Dahmer's gonna get you. Oh because, my god. Because <laughs> he was like that was like a big thing in the nineties and like he was a real person. And I remember I being so scared. I remember I was like visiting my cousins in Virginia. And they're like, oh, he lives in Virginia. He didn't. He lived in Milwaukee. But they're yeah. like, oh, he lives. They're trying to scare me because I was like a little kid. Like I was like, oh my god, you know, what five, five or six or whatever. Oh my god. Whenever he got caught, so I remember because being Jeffrey terrified of you. Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, right. yeah. I, anyway. <laughs> oh, and one last thing I'll say yes, before so. you wrap up was that poli- the police officers who let that little boy go, like I think they just retired after or something, and they were just like. The, the Milwaukee Police Department was like praising them for like what a great job they've done. And people on social media were like, oh, really? Like what a great job these guys did. And they took down their tweet because they were like, because this show came out and reminded people of how they failed. They literally yeah. failed, you yeah. know? Anyway, yeah. sorry I went on a, a, a rant. I wasn't expecting no, to talk about it so much. It's so interesting, this show, because there's such a, f- for, for shows like this that are based that are real. It's like, there's such a fine line between being like, Oh my God, it's done so well. And Evan Peters is so good to being like, yikes, like this is real. And then I'm a psychopath and I'm like locking my door. I believe he's dead. I believe Jeffrey Dahmer is now. Yeah. They murdered him in prison. Correct. But (laughs) I'm like, sorry, everyone. Yeah. Major spoilers. I'm like locking my door. I did the same thing when the people versus OJ came out. I binged it and then I was like locking my door. Like OJ was going to come to Brooklyn and get me. Well, what? you know, you'd never be too safe nowadays because people are, are insane. So especially as a woman, <laughs> I don't want to speak for women, but Correct. you all need to do everything you can do to protect yourselves against these crazy and insane Literally people, especially did. men out there yeah. who are oh, disgusting. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of women <laughs> Anyway, not to take a hard turn to change the subject, but Please do. let's get off of this Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> yes. Um, any anything you've been watching or, or reading, Jay, that's um, filling you I, artistically? Well, I have I have a friend who's in the Luckiest Girl Alive. It's a new Netflix show. Oh my god! Um, his name is Carson McCormick, and he plays this really. It's. I'm not sure if you know anything about it or. or I watched it. the trailer the other. Oh night. yeah, it's, yeah, it it's really good. good. And I'm not just saying that because he's my friend, but uh, it's a really good. It's um, based on a book 
called Luckiest Girl Alive, and it's a new Netflix series. And I remember talking to him a couple months ago, and he's like, "People are gonna are gonna hate me when this comes out." And I was like, "No, everybody knows you're just acting." Then I watched, and I was like, "Yikes!" Um, <laughs> he, you know, he 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 plays the villain, and um, he plays it very well. I will say that. Um, Check it out. I, I recommend you watching it. Maybe we can talk about it next week if you watch yeah, it. Yeah, I'll definitely try to. I'll try to watch. And so then, yeah, it can be our it's, topic. A qu- it's a quick watch. It's only like ninety minutes, I think. So. Oh great! Yeah. And uh, what's Mila Kunis? Right? Is Mila Kunis? She does. She's phenomenal. I never like. I never thought about Mila Kunis being a phenomenal actress, and like she really like nailed it. Oh great! And Actually, Finn, Finn Whitrock. Um, oh, we love. Yeah, and my girl. Yeah. What's the mom? What's her name? Oh, I can't remember her name on the top of my head, but um, the mom from Friday Night Friday Night Lights, and she's been in American Horror Story, and uh, it sucks. I, I wasn't know. planning on talking about it, but yeah, she's so um, good. I see her face. Yeah, me too. Dang I it, I see her face. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's still in my mind, but she is fierce. Shout mm-hmm. out, DM us, you guys, when you remember her I'm, name. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Yeah, keep, yeah. Just keep talking. I'll look it up. Yeah, keep, like, talking, talking. keep talking. Well, I do want to talk about <laughs> Connie I Britton. Am, yes, Connie Britton. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We love out. Connie Britton. Britton, Burton, Tim Burton. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> um, Jason, I'm so excited because I'm going to see the invited dress rehearsal of Kimberly Akimbo tonight. Exciting, yes. And this will lead us into our guest. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll talk a lot about this in the interview with Stephen Boyer, you guys. Wait till you hear this episode. He's so funny and has so much wisdom, and it, it's a really good episode. But I saw Kimberly Akimbo off-Broadway at the Atlantic. Is that where it was? I'm embarrassed if I'm saying the wrong thing, but I think it was. Um, months ago, and I was in awe of this show and these performances. Nice. I literally laughed so hard cried so hard, gasped. Like I was like speaking out loud in this show, like an idiot. Like people next to me are probably like, can this girl be quiet? It was, it's just such an incredible show. And and I really feel like, like nothing we've ever seen before. Um, So I'm so excited to go see what the Broadway production is like, you know, cause there's always yeah. changes and adjustments. So I'm so, how many times can I say I'm so excited? <laughs> but I well, am. The ca- the younger cast, like some of the younger cast, were was on were at uh, Broadway Con when I had gone and I got to go to that panel and um, it was so cool to hear how excited they were about the about the transfer and you know the work that they're doing. So it's really cool that it's finally here. You know, well, you know, some previews, right? But um, or is it well, the opening, yeah. official opening? Tonight will be the dress rehearsal, the f- and then tomorrow, yeah. which is Wednesday. We're, we're talking to you guys from the past. Wednesday will be yeah. the first preview. This is coming out on Thursday, October 13th. And yeah. that is going to be the second preview. So you guys should check Amazing. it out because I really feel like once this starts getting buzz and people start seeing it, it's you're not going to get an easy ticket. So y'all, check it out at the booth. I heard it here first. Check it out at the booth, y'all. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> you heard it here first on Marley Rock, <laughs> on Survival Jobs. Yeah. And so we were so lucky to be able to talk to Stephen Boyer this week. Big week. It's a big week for him. And he spent, uh, you know, an hour chatting with us about survival jobs, mm-hmm. about his journeys. So, so and it was shocking. Him. There's a part, we're going to have a little spoiler, where he said he didn't work for 10 years. And I was shocked, shocked. And, uh, you know, it really puts things into perspective. And it, and I said something really cheesy after, but, um, you know, it was like a really good reminder of like, to keep going, to keep yeah. going, no matter what, you know, no matter how difficult it may be, no matter how many people like naysay you, like if you really mm-hmm. believe in yourself and you really, this is really your dream and it's really your goal, like don't lose sight of it, you know, and then somebody, you know, it just takes one person, as you'll hear, to believe in you and, and to really hold you and, and to form you and, and say, hey, here's an opportunity. And of course, be prepared, be ready and, and be ready for your opportunity, right? So prepare, but like, don't stop. If it's really something you want, like, don't stop. Yes, you guys. Do not stop. Let me tell yeah. you. Let's tell everyone a little bit about Stephen before they listen. For sure. Start us off. Okay. <laughs> so Boyer. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Boyer recurs on the second season of the HBO Max series Love Life. Steven Steven starred on the NBC comedy Trial and Error and can be seen in the upcoming feature film 
Borderlands, <laughs> Boyer was nominated for a Tony Award for the Broadway run of Hand to God, as well as an Obie and a Lucille Lortel Award for his work in the show's off-Broadway production. Named one of the future legends of New York theater by Time Out New York, Stephen recently starred in Assassins, which was a part of Encore's Off Center series, as well as MTC's The Explorer Club and Second Stage's production of Modern Terrorism. He also played the tighter role of Trevor and Nick Jones' darkly funny Trevor performed with Lesser America. Mm. In addition to his work in the theater, Boyer has appeared in Steven Spielberg's Bridge of Spies and in Martin Scorsese's film The Wolf of Wall Street, as well as Hustlers, starring Jennifer Lopez and Constance Wu. Boyer recently recurred on the NBC series Chicago Fire and has appeared in such TV series as The Blacklist, Orange is the New Black, The Good Wife, The Crazy Ones, Louie, Mom, Person of Interest, Law and Order, and Ed. He's be working, y'all. He starred in and produced the Share independent web sitcom pilot from Emily Chadwick Weiss. And he is a graduate of the Juilliard School and is also a member of the Ensemble Studio Theater. Let's get into it, y'all. And now can be seen in Kimberly Akimbo at the yeah. Theater. Yes. I missed that? Yes. No. No. <laughs> okay, good. It's a I'm new. No. Am I just um, not reading correctly? No, cool. you did great. You did great. Enjoy the episode, you guys. Awesome. Enjoy. Welcome, Steven. We are so happy to have you on Survivor Dives, a podcast. Great to be here. Yeah, where are, you, where are you zooming in from? Uh, my house in Windsor Terrace, Brooklyn. Yes. Yes. Just moved here like uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I love it. <laughs> and congratulations! So far. Yeah, congrats! Yeah. Thanks. I used to live in a railroad apartment with my three-year-old and my wife, and it was like <laughs> it was impossible. It was a lot but happening. I'm sure. There's a lot, a lot going on. It's like everyone was in the same room all the time. You're like, it's time. It's like, <laughs> it's time. That's huge. Congratulations. And yeah. Speaking of huge things happening in your life, this is a big week for Kimberly Kimbo, which I spoke to you about a little bit before we recorded. I'm a huge fangirl. What are they calling the Kimberly fans? They're calling them something. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. There's something going around, unless I'm completely delusional, but I don't know what it is. So I guess uh, I'm not a true fan. Nope. Kimets. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know if that is it, but I will going forward call myself a commit. Commit? <laughs> uh, sure. We, we're yeah. starting it right now. Commit. Yeah, we're starting it. I'm right sorry, I was a podcast. There we I'm go. Survival Jobs a podcast. Well, so congratulations on the show, too. We'll talk about it a little bit further into the interview. It's a big week for you, and you bought a house, and you're in Brooklyn, and everything's happening. Everything's happening. Amazing. Yeah. Before we, so this inter, this interview, the show is called Survival Jobs, a podcast. We love to talk to artists about their survival jobs and how they got to where they are. If you could describe what survival jobs means to you, what would you say? Like when you hear survival job. Uh, what it he's like, this is, me? he's like, oh gosh, this is yeah. a stressful one. <laughs> The reason, you know, we started asking this is because we've, we've interviewed a ton of people and I feel like the definition of survival job varies from person to person. It's so, just the thing you do to keep, you know, body and soul together. Like it's ooh, the thing yeah. you do to, 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 to pay your bills that you really don't care about. <laughs> it's just, it's just Facts. a job. It's just, it's just something, you know, to, also, to me, the best survival job was always the one that, like, you got paid in cash or it was, like, off the books or something like that because it was it was really about just trying to make the most money possible in the shortest amount of time so you could get back to doing what you really wanted to do. That's so true. That cash money under the table, baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, do you have a favorite survival job? I'm stuttering. Do you have a favorite survival job you've had over the years? <laughs> um, One that maybe impacted your career positively? Oh, no. None of them impacted my <laughs> career positively. <laughs> Not at all. All right. It's well, like uh, hard no. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, they were there. I, I, had, I had a few. I actually... I, I haven't had as as many as as I thought I would, but I I've had some ones that are really bizarre. Um, uh, talking about 
money under the table and like getting yeah. paid in cash. Those jobs are really hard to find. I actually had a really hard time like finding a survival job, period, just because it, it, you always have to know somebody and, you know, I have no resume for a survival job. And, and, uh, but a friend of mine was working at this bakery on like, uh, Avenue A. And, um, and then it was like this tiny, tiny, just like a little counter with like coffee and baked goods and the bakery was in the back. There was always one person. It was just one person behind the counter and that was it. And it stayed open late until like 10 and uh, late for a bakery. Yeah. And she, <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm quitting my job uh, because I got, I got held up. Somebody came in and held me up with a gun at like 930 at night and I'm the only one there. And I'm like, take, take all the money. Take it all. Take She's the like, money. Take the pastries. Take, take the money. This, take the croissants. Take the coffee. <laughs> take the croissants. <laughs> you, want the, you, want, you want some extra cream? Yeah. <laughs> take the oat milk. Come I'll on. take whatever you want. The, milk. <laughs> the most expensive milks. Oh, my God. Take all the milks. <laughs> all the milks. So, but, like, she told me, and she was like, yeah, and it didn't really set in until later. I'm like, wow, that guy had a, had a gun and. Huh, that was that was a really dangerous situation. So she quit. And when she told me that she quit, I'm like, so uh that means there's a job available, right? <laughs> <laughs> now they need someone, right? And she's like, sure, they do. So I I took that job after she was like, You're like Yeah, I, I got held up, so I, I had to get out. I'm like, oh so, good, so finally, finally an opening. <laughs> You're like, I'll take it. I can yeah. get held up. So I took it. I took it. And, uh, you know, like I had to get up at like five in the morning and it was, uh, which is, is not, it's not good for someone who works in theater. Getting up at 5 a.m. is not. No. Yeah. Our bodies don't like to do that. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that job sucked. I did not get held up at gunpoint, but <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't last there for, for very long. Were you baking also? Like when you were baking, the... I actually would have been way more <laughs> interested in the baking side of things because I like I talked to like the head baker and was like, "What is this?" They they were you know experimenting. They were like, "We're gonna do some like sesame miso muffins." I'm like, "Ooh, show me, show me the miso muffins." Yeah. But no, I was just like slinging coffee and croissants. Slinking coffee and croissants. Slinging coffee on everybody. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Jason and I worked a survival job together at a restaurant, and the owner always said, if anyone ever comes in to rob this place, just give them everything. <laughs> yeah. Just the give, give them the restaurant. Yeah. When you were saying that, I was like, oh, this, I mean, luckily, yeah. not that I know of, Jay, nothing ever like that happened. No. Ever like that? No, okay. I used I'm to work wondering. at Starbucks too, and I would work like the closing. I was like the closing shift supervisor, and it was the same thing. They'd be like, "Yeah, if anybody comes, don't do anything." I'm like, no. "I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't. I would just, yeah, they could take whatever they want. Take the chairs. Like, I, I'm not defending this place yeah. at all." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do think once somebody broke in and stole all, a lot of tequila from this oh, place man. we worked at, I mean, that's a good thing to steal. You're like, Are you sure. Up. Margaritas for everyone. <laughs> okay, so so it seems like you don't have like a favorite survival job. That... Uh, well, I mean, like favorite makes it seem like there's one that I'm like, oh, that was great. I really love doing that. Uh, like maybe I, I didn't. I didn't like doing any of them. Yeah, but there was. I can relate. <laughs> yeah, there was Same. one that was um really weird, and I and kind of blows people's minds when I tell them about this. But it was. Uh, this was another thing that like, I just got paid, like uh, it was, I got paid, you know, per, it was a phone call thing, calling in to morning radio shows in different parts of the country. Because if you've ever listened to morning radio, they're always like, okay, we're, we're gonna do, we're gonna do War of the Roses. We're going to have Bob thinks that uh, Karen is cheating on him. So he's going to have Karen. Uh, Karen's going to get a dozen roses for free and she gets to send it to whoever she wants. We're going to see if she sends them to Bob. Oh, oh I love God. that. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, can you send them to Rick? And then I'm like, who's Rick? Who's Rick? 
And she's like, oh, my God, Bob, is that you? And I'm like, I knew you were cheating on me. This is, I knew it from the moment. Oh, my God. You, and, he, and so <laughs> this is all fake. All these things are fake on every radio station. All oh, the like. Wow. And so I found, I used to be a, a, st- a stand up. And stand up. I can tell. Surprise. <laughs> so, surprise, stand up doesn't pay well. <laughs> what, you don't, those drink tickets don't help pay the rent? <laughs> like, sometimes you're like on the road and they're like, we're going to pay you in a nachos platter. <laughs> And there's like no union protecting comedians. Like there's no actors equity for, for comedians. So you're, you're just kind of like, okay, I'll take the nachos. No, <laughs> nothing you can do. But um, so uh, this other comic was like, oh, you get up early. They connect you to like, you know, Greenville or like South Carolina or Georgia or somewhere and some radio station at like six in the morning. And you, and you act like you're in this crazy situation. And you get paid like 50 bucks a call. I'm like, I'm in. I am so there. <laughs> I like it got really detailed. Like they would tell me, you know, this one is in Arkansas. And I would go online and I would find the like, I would go to the International Dialects of English Archive and I would find Arkansas. And I'd be like, okay, how can I sound like I'm from <laughs> Arkansas? And I put in way too much like backstory and research no, into this. So I'm good. sure no one else I did this. I love that. <laughs> this is literally an acting gig. Congrats. It was like an acting it gig. Really yeah. But but it was so I mean sometimes they were it, it it like hurt my heart. Like they would have us like sometimes they would say okay, you know, they would have like a little meeting with us on the phone, the DJ would be like, "Okay, so who who's playing the guy who's playing the girl?" All right, okay. Um so you can, we'll, we'll bleep it out. So you just go ahead and like curse at each other. And then I want you to just like get into it, just like rip into each other. And so we would like, this person that you never met, you like yeah. heard their vo- voice over the phone. And then you had to like, at, at six in the morning, screaming, like my neighbors are like ready to call the police, <laughs> screaming, being like, I trusted you. You ruined my life. Like everything just. <laughs> Why do I like vision you doing this in your rail- railroad apartment? <laughs> I know. That's what I did. Wow. Like I full did. commitment, like full out, no marking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I'd have to tell my wife. I'd be like, hey, I'm, uh, I have to go. I have to go scream at, at a stranger in the next room. So just, just try and stay asleep. Just try to stay asleep, yeah. Just try to stay asleep, easy. and I'm in the next room, just being like, ah. yeah. It, it was, it was bad. Wow, I love that That's, story. We never know. You might have to play a character from Arkansas one day, and then you'll <laughs> yeah. have that um, in you already. You have that research in your yeah. body already. <laughs> well, but this kind of ruins the magic of like I know the right? like <laughs> the mori of it all. You and know? then and the like show. and I'll like I'll I'll like be in a cab or something, and I'll hear someone listening to one of these things, and I'm like, uh, "War of the Roses." Man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Likely story. Dude. And then I listen. I'm like, how are they going to do? Because I know these people don't know each other. <laughs> how, do they that's sound like crazy. a real couple? Yeah, you like rating them on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's so cool. And so you said you started doing started with stand up and in, in your career, and you know, we did a little research, and you've done Broadway, of course, and TV and film. You had a Tony Award nomination. Can you just tell us a little bit about like where your journey started, like how you got uh, into performing? I was uh, I was like a I was like a, a crazy child. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I, I was like a, I was an insane, hyperactive kid who always like did impressions of everyone and everything that I saw on TV. I love that. Like, I feel like, you know, Looney Tunes cartoons kind of taught me my early <laughs> acting, early acting technique. Um, and uh, and my parents, like, channeled my energy by being like, oh, there's auditions for this community theater show. So let's just put them, let's put them on the stage. And I, love I, I loved it. And I, you know, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And so... 
limited casting pool <laughs> when they I think when community theaters and you know, like one equity theater at the time in Columbus found out that there was like a 10 year old <laughs> that does accents and, <laughs> and can sing and is really into like comedic timing. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was suddenly in like two and three shows at once. I'd be like in a show and rehearsing for another show at the same time. That's so cool though. And uh, and then trying to do like the school show too, which was always like, come on guys, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, can we get more professional at here? That, come at on. that point, I'm like, I'm like, eh, this. Uh, I got to get out of here by four o'clock because I got to get. To <laughs> <laughs> um, you were like booked and busy. Yeah, I was booked and busy. I was like the bookingest child actor <laughs> in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> uh, Columbus, Ohio. And so good. And then, um, but then I, I, I went to Juilliard and like, you know, learned to do something more than just like imitate people. And, uh, and then I got out of school and I like, didn't work for like, I, I, I actually, I, I booked a Broadway show at the booth for my first gig out of, out of school. It was, what? it was, I'm not Rappaport <laughs> with, um, Judd Hirsch and Ben Vereen as two wow. octogenarians on a park bench, and I mug them at knife point. Oh, wow, we have a really big hey. dream of mugging on this episode. <laughs> I, I played so many muggers and drug addicts and drug dealers, and like, I don't, it just became like my bread and butter was playing assholes and villains. <laughs> you gotta yeah. lean into the bread and butter, you know? You know? <laughs> We talked about this on our last episode. Like you got to lean into where you're going to get the check to then do your like passion and art. Yeah. Outside. So, yeah. So that's almost like surviving and survival that's, jobbing. That's right. That's right. You know? Yeah. You, you got to survive. Wait, so you said you booked, um, I booked, you booked so I booked Broadway. This, yeah. Right out of school. Wow. And, and I thought this is going to be a breeze. And then I like didn't work for like a decade. And, oh, and I just, and I kept thinking, oh, the next thing's right around the corner. It's going to be any minute now. Because uh, I was, I was on Broadway and yeah. no, I didn't work for like another 10 years. I had a job here and there, but it was just like, it was, it was rough. And uh, I was like maxing out credit cards and it was bad. And so then what? I started doing stand up because uh -huh. I, I was just so like, I, I was just, I needed to like get up in front of people uh, and, and, like, do, and do going, something. Yeah. And so I, you know, bought some books, learned how to write some material and started doing that. And went eat on the, some nachos. Eat some nachos. I went on the road with another comic for like four months and, uh, and actually like managed to pay my rent as a comedian, which was nice. Um, but I ultimately didn't want to be a comedian. I wanted to be an actor. Right. For sure. So, so uh, I think I, then I think I, I got uh, a little show that was directed by Moritz von Stulpnagel, who directed Hand to God later on. <clears throat> and, gotcha. and I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I really don't work very much. And he's like, what? He's like, how is that? He's like, really? He's like, you should be working all the time. And then, and then he ended up like, kind of like being a champion of mine and like basically casting me in, in a ton of things over the next few years. And, um, and so I was kind of able to get back on track as, as an actor. I love that. What does Lady Gaga say? It just takes one person. In yeah. the room. Right. <laughs> I guess what? that's true. Takes one person with a crazy German name. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's... takes one Moritz von Stuttgart. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you, you got really your Tony nomination, you. right? Hand of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Thank yeah. God for Marie. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Moritz. Thank God for him. Thank God. You can for just Moritz. say Moritz. That's easy. Moritz. Yeah. Moritz. Moritz. Okay, no, it's so you, nice to have someone. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Go ahead, I'm just Jake, gonna say go. it's so nice to it's really nice to have someone who really like believes in you and really like sees the talent in you and it's like, hey, you you need to be booked and 
you're part of my you're part of my tribe so whatever that means i'm gonna make you part of it and i'm gonna help you get booked because you're freaking talented yeah because it's you know it's rough to to keep on going out there when like the only thing you have is the belief in yourself you're like i know that i can do this i know that i'm good at this but no one else is telling you that you are so right. you just it's like you're just like in a vacuum um yeah. right yeah Sometimes all you need is that person to say hey i think you're really good to be like shit yes i am what i've been feeling this whole time is like, <laughs> yeah. just like the extra fuel to keep it going is super important for yeah. artists of any kind for sure to have somebody else believe in you you know what do they always say like surround yourself with people who believe in you but it's true you need it. You need this. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about your journey and your struggles and your decade of not working. And now you're about to be, I'm going to like give this all positive juju. You're about to be in a hit Broadway show, Kimberly Akimbo. And I just want to talk a little bit about the show and the journey of the show and what's the whole experience been like. I mean, from an audience perspective, watching this, I've never seen anything like it. And it's amazing. Part one of that question is, let's talk about your journey in Kimberly. And then I have a follow-up. Okay. Um, my, my journey? In like, this show, uh, yeah. Like, how's it been? What's going on? Spill the tea. It's been great. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 kind of grew up doing musicals and then like sort of fell out of it for a very long time and then didn't come back to it until uh, I was, I did uh, Assassins with Encores and Victoria Clark was in that. And I remember being like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in a musical with Victoria Clark. And that's <laughs> so Broadway. Cause I, I'd, <laughs> I'd seen her, you know, in Light in the Piazza. I was in like the third row and I remember seeing her like at the edge of the stage, singing the song while she's crying and being like, how do you do that? How can you do that? How, actually? Like no one else can do that. Yeah. Like when you start bawling, it's like the first thing to, that goes is your voice. And, and she just like somehow manages to push it all out there. And I'm like, it's incredible. So... I was like, I, this is it. This is, this is, this is the, this is the best time I'm ever going to have in a musical because Victoria Clark's in it. I'm, I'm, you know, and that was Assassins and that ran, you know, for a week because it's on course. And then Kimberly Akimbo happens and they're like, Victoria Clark is the, is, is Kim and you're going to be her dad. Wow. You're going to be her dad. And, uh, <laughs> So it's, it's, it was amazing. I mean, it was kind of like, and then to hear that we're going to Broadway, it was like a, it was like my, my 15, 16 year old self was like oh jumping my God. for joy. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to make, you know, we're, we, we might record an album. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's so exciting and, and so well deserved. It was, uh, it, it was, it was really exciting. And then, you know, we put it up at the Atlantic and it really did feel, it really did feel different. It felt like, it felt different from what else is out there. I mean, first of all, it's like, it's not like based on a movie, you know? It's original, right? It's original. It's IP. original. It's, Can you it's, tell us a little bit about it for those who don't know? It's, well, it's based on the play by David Lindsay Abair that uh, I think ran in the early 2000s off Broadway and it was like an early uh, big hit for him. Um, and Janine Tesori does the music and, uh, and David writes the book and the lyrics and they'd, they'd worked together before. Um, and they kept, I think they did, they did Shrek together. And ever since then they were mm. like, they really like got along like gangbusters and they're like, we need to find something that, yeah. that we want to do for ourselves. And uh, Janine was like, hey, this play, Kimberly Akimbo, this play of yours, 
David, I think I think this is a musical. He's like, uh, I don't know if it's a musical. He's like, <laughs> he's like I don't know if it sings. I... <laughs> but then <laughs> Janine was like, it's def- it's a musical. Let's work on it. And they did workshops of it for, um, uh, you know, the, the way that musicals work. Janine says it takes seven years to make a, a musical. And we had a two-year break because of COVID, but it worked out. Right. <laughs> Just seven years. Yeah. That feels um, like cold probably felt like seven in its own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they did tons of uh, workshops and things and um, and it went through a lot of different changes. And then uh, it, it even went through changes between the Atlantic and Broadway. Um, so, you know, the show you're going to see, if you saw it off Broadway, it's I'm, I'm really curious as to uh, what changes are going to kind of like register with people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it's like the, the thrust of the entire story and, and the, the vibe of everything is definitely the same. But there's just like tiny little surgical changes that, uh, cha- that make like a big impact for like characters and for storylines. But I'm just wondering if people are going to see it that have seen it before and register those changes or if they're or if they're going to be so seamless that it just brings you into the world so much that you're just going to be on the ride and you're right. not even you're just going to be enjoying yourself too much to even, you know, think about the, yeah. the technical aspect of theater making. Right. I can't wait. This show, like, hello, listeners go get your ticket now while you can, because I feel like once this opens and people are starting to talk about it, I, I really think it's going to blow up. And I don't know if that's like the theater nerd in me being like, I love this so much. We're going to see. Um, so the, so the follow-up question to about your journey with this show is you mentioned you're playing Victoria Clark's dad and I don't want to give like major spoilers to everyone, well. <laughs> but like, can you talk about that? Because when yeah. I saw it, I really, she was 16, like, and, right. and you were her dad. And mm-hmm. it was like, not, not an inch of like, pretend there. I mean, it is all freaking pretend, but you know what I mean? It was so real. And, <laughs> and what? what? No, nothing is real. Yeah. I imagine that that was a challenging process, right? So can you, can you talk about that a little bit? You know, that aspect of it was not so challenging because that's, it's kind of all on, that's kind of all on, that's all Vicky. That's all Victoria Clark because she, you know, she came in here into the show doing, knowing that, you know, she needed to be 16 in, in, in the body of, of, uh, in the body of an older woman. And she that all came from her. It was not hard to, to think of her as my daughter because she was just acting like a teenage girl. You know, her, the, the, the tone of her voice, the, the, the rhythm of her speech, the way that she moves, everything was, it was like she was, you know, the awkward teen that, that is the new kid in school and doesn't, is trying to make a friend. And um, so, like the the strength of her characterization made it made it very easy to, for you to just slip into yeah, dad. Yeah, and also I it, it came at a strange time in my life because um, for a, a number of reasons I I just I just become a father myself uh, when we were doing it at the Atlantic, which just really like just deepened everything um, for me and for the, the character. And, uh, and then, you know, there's themes of living, living your life for today because we don't know how much time we all have. And, uh, and during the course of the run, one, uh, one of my parents had uh, an accident and got, and got very sick. And so it immediate, it was my, my father, my father uh, became very sick during uh, the the run at the Atlantic. And I'm, my character is dressed like 
my father from the the late eighties through the nineties. Yeah. I'm where I'm wearing <laughs> like, you know, the tan windbreaker dad jacket that he wore for a decade and yeah. the, the white Reeboks that he mowed the lawn in. And like, it's, it's Sarah Lux, our costume designer made, it's like the nineties are her, her sweet spot. <laughs> um, and she, it, so it, it, there was all these strange, this confluence of things in my life that were happening. It's like, becoming a father, uh, facing the prospect of, you know, your parents' mortality. And uh, that all just folded into the show and just deepened everything. Um, yeah. And so it became kind of like a cathartic experience to do the show. And it also became kind of like a little more painful than you wanted it to be. Right. Um, but it's... Uh, it's, uh, but luckily the show is also hilariously funny. So it's just a joy to go to work every day yeah. because you, you get to laugh and yeah. hear the audience laugh. And that's what I love about the show. It feels like it's the, it's the show that the audience like is having the best time. They're laughing. They're like, the music is, is making them want to dance. And they're just like in peals of, hilarious laughter and then like a just a a moment or a line like well just just weeping pierce, pierce your, you your yeah. heart, and then tears yeah a hundred percent i've i i keep talking about myself on this show sorry but when i left kimberly the yeah. first time i took a selfie of my face and i was just sobbing you just can't help it like i don't even know why i really don't know why it is a magical, beautiful show. Congratulations. Everyone run to see the show. Can you please show us the hat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, to our viewers. Yeah, viewers. Okay, look at the swag, guys. This is, I mean, show. actually, I, I'm sorry. This is not for this, sale. This is, uh, this is Victoria Clark made up these hats for us for the Atlantic opening. This yes. is, and, um, it'll be at the Broadway flea market in 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Someone will get ready. <laughs> Oh my uh, gosh. That'll be, that will be my survival <laughs> job. <laughs> <That's Yeah. laughs> I'll be like, these are my old programs. <laughs> you want the hat? Okay. Like, like you just look like like a yeah, like an old guy just had a vision yeah. like old, like in a cloak, like at the flea market. In a cloak. What is he? A, a, a wizard? Like <laughs> I don't know the way your body language just was in the voice. I just see you like in a cloak, like yeah. in the corner at the flea market. Whatever. Yes. Samantha thinks very highly of you, Stephen. <laughs> as soon as I get as soon as I get off this podcast, I'm gonna go put on my cloak. Yeah. I can't wait. I mean, Send you got it me. To us. You, you got it on the Instagram to promote the episode. Oh my yeah. Gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I want to switch gears a little bit. Okay. And I want to know if you have because you've been working in this industry for a long time. Do you have a dream role or collaboration that you're like been eyeing and something that's like or a person you want to work with that you're like, I have to do this at some point in my career. That's hard. That's a heavy because, one, right? <laughs> well, because I, the thing is, is like talking about like a dream role is tough because my dream was always to do new, new works, new productions. Yeah. To like originate a character. And so to talk about like a dream part or a dream role, it's, it's, it's always, it's always something that has already been done that you can point to and say that part in that show. And for me, the dream is, I don't even know what the show is yet. You know, it's like, I, I want to, to, to read a script or meet a writer or meet a director that, that just, understands me i mean yeah it's like it's like it's like how hand to god came about it's like rob askins just kind of like wrote this thing and was like hey you want you want to do it it has a puppet in it i'm like sure i'm like <laughs> i'm like I, I do a little puppet stuff so yeah let's let's do it and then we just end it's like and then it ended up just being this full collaboration for like years that like went to three different theaters um 
And so like that scenario, which hardly ever, ever happens is really the dream. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's hard, it's hard to know if that would happen again. I really hope that it does, but, uh, it's like, you know, lightning striking, that right. finding a writer that actually writes something that just fits your strengths. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to send you all the good vibes that that happens. You know, we're going to oh, manifest guys. that with your manifest clothes. that for you with Thank the cloak. You. Yeah. <laughs> with the cloak. It'll bring Put on a cloak. <laughs> Light some candles. Yeah. <laughs> Do a we get some, get some stones. Yeah. We'll just put them under your pillow. <laughs> yeah. Very good. <laughs> Steve, so is there any 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 art any any books i mean i'm sure you're just free, freaking busy in rehearsals but like when you do have your probably one day off or whatever is there any any kind of art that's fulfilling you right now tv shows books comics um, you, you know what i you know what i've been doing a lot lately is uh i i really like to um i like to learn new things learn new skills right yeah i feel like if i'm if I ever feel like something is off, I can, I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not actively like pursuing learning a new thing right now. So I'm, I'm learning to play the drums right now, which is so cool. very, I like, I, 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 uh, like set up like a little, like a little, you know, like the tiniest drum kit I could find, uh, and I am, um, it's, 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 it's like therapy a little bit because you, it's very active and you're, you're, you know, you're hitting things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also musical and it's, it's making me like listen to music differently. And um, it's something that I've kind of always wanted to do. I, I like learning new instruments and I, and I've never, uh, gone down the path of like you know percussion, so I, I, I'm 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 playing the drums. It sounds like you are someone who likes to make a lot of noise. I with, too. With the drums, <laughs> with the with the fake beating screams. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> like you sound like a loud guy. You sound hot. <laughs> it's good you're out of the railroad now, so you can hit yeah. those drums. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I I always wanted to learn uh, an instrument, but I I used to play the violin. Here I am oh, talking well, about myself again. You can <laughs> pick it back up. Yeah. It's never too late. I think yeah, I, I... get a guitar and a chord chart. And it's like, honestly, it's one of the best instruments to teach yourself because you can play songs, you know, very quickly. Yeah. I know. I th I was doing that like 10 years ago and I'm like, damn, it, I should have kept it up instead of quitting. My what? damn fingers are hurting. I was, oh, I, was I was trying to teach myself guitar and then I just quit. And I'm like, damn it, if I would have kept going, I would have been get like a, a pro by now. Well, get a... <laughs> Uh, get a get a classical guitar. The nylon string guitars are are way more forgiving to learn on because they don't cut your fingers up like the steel string guitars. Jason, that's my tip. Up. <laughs> that there we go. Pick it back, pick it back up, Jason, and then we can make a new survival jobs theme song. Original. Yeah, you could have the survival jobs band, <laughs> and you come and you play the drums. Yeah, yes. And in I'll ten years, I'll be ready. Coffee. Yeah, <laughs> ten years. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is love that for us. so amazing thank you for joining us thank you everyone needs to go see kimberly we have one more question and then we're gonna play a super fun game to end the show oh, and i think you're gonna love it okay um so so obviously we talked a lot about survival jobs we have listeners who are looking for tips and advice so do you have any advice for anybody who's listening to this that may feel stuck in a survival job and not really really having their outlet for art, maybe feeling lost, flatlining. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, it's like I, I mentioned before, like you, the, the only thing that you, that you have to sustain you sometimes is, is your belief that like, it's almost, it's almost like your secret, your secret that you carry with you. You're like, I am, I am great at this. And other people just don't know it yet. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's all you have is your own like little flame that you're like, 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to let this flame blow out because I know that I know that it, I know that it's there. And someday somebody's going to give me a chance to show it, but it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, there's no getting around the fact that it's, it's hard. Facts. But, <laughs> As Jason says. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Yeah. The belief in the manifestation of it all, you yeah. know? Yeah. Some days it's, I feel like it's harder than others. Like some days I'm, you know, for me personally, I'm like, oh yeah, I can really do this. And other days it's like, damn, y'all. I'm tired. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. It's tiring. Tired. <laughs> but you know, life is tiring. That's, That's right. right. It's like, exactly. It's like, it's all. That is right. Every, everything's tiring. Like even, even when you get the thing, it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, we just got out of week two of tech and, and believe me, I am very, very tired. Let of me course. show you this that I just discovered. Aha. Uh -huh. This is not an ad. I wish. Aha. Uh -huh, sparkling water. Oh my. It's like sparkling water with caffeine. Oh, I want one right now. It's incredible. Name. Because you know what? Sometimes too much coffee makes me like. I get so much agita and like jittery. This is a nice, yeah. like bubbly, little bit of caffeine. So there's this, there's we'll the send uh, some to the stage door. <laughs> there's the um, <laughs> caffeinated, uh, there's the caffeinated vitamin water, the yellow vitamin water. Oh, energy, yellow right? My favorite. Yeah, that's mine too. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you don't want coffee. You're like, I need something cold and sweet. Yeah. And that will like make me go love that one. <laughs> so And it's so healthy getting your yeah. vitamins, you know? Oh, it's wow, so, Steven, so, you're so healthy. healthy. <laughs> I am so healthy. Let me tell you more about soft drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. Maybe they'll sponsor survival jobs. We love that. Yeah. We no, but love thank that. you for sharing that. And I think it's it's so important to to have to be surrounded by that community to keep going. And that's the biggest takeaway I've gotten from you today. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Keep going <laughs> and pick up the drums. Um, so we're going to end with a game, like we said a million times okay. already. And we thought since you went to Juilliard, we thought it'd be fun to play a game called Juilliard or not. Uh, <laughs> original. I couldn't think I've of been, like Juilliard or something I've been, else. I've been waiting my whole life for this game. Well, yes. let's see how you do. Jay, you know what we haven't done in a while? Cue the music. Cue the music. The music. Okay, so it we're comes gonna in in post. Yeah, it comes in post. <laughs> we're gonna list off names of actors, and you're gonna say Juilliard if you think they went to Juilliard or not. If you yeah. think that they didn't. If, if I don't get a hundred percent on this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel very disappointed. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Jay, you want to take the first? Yeah, Jessica Chastain. Juilliard. Correct. Correct. Adam Driver. <laughs> Julia. Yes. I went to right. school with both of those people. <laughs> oh gosh. <Damn. laughs> that one we just wanted to start off easy. <sighs> sure. Uh, Mariska Hargitay. Not. Good. Yeah, Danielle right. Brooke. Juilliard. Mr. Brad Pitt. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Robin De Jesus. Uh, Juilliard. No. Oh, uh, it's all right. You're on a streak. You got it back, though. Sarah Merez. Juilliard. Correct. Chrissy Teigen. Not. Not, you're right. <laughs> Ellen Pompeo. Not. Correct. Viola Davis. Juilliard. And Patty Lapone. Juilliard. Correct. That's really good. You got like oh. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Robin ten. Robin is going to be so happy that you thought he went to Juilliard. I can't wait to tell him. <laughs> Robin didn't go to school. He just really? Went. Yeah. Wow. If you listen to the first episode of Survival Jobs, a podcast, you can learn a little bit about his history. <laughs> the second one, second, second episode. Yeah. Our first guest. Yeah. 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 He just he just got booked and blessed right away. Booked. Booked <laughs> and blessed. Nice. Oh, man. Steven, 
Thank you. Oh, sorry. We're going to do that. No, sorry. This, Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Monday and we're like, who's talking today? Go ahead, Jay. Now I was going to say, um, where can everybody follow you if they're not following you already on the social medias to keep up to date with all the good stuff happening? Uh, I am on Instagram and Twitter at Steve Boyer 5000. 5000. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There's no N. It's just Steve Boyer. Steve Boyer podcast. Which go. sometimes gets, uh, people are like, I can't do it. I found Steven Boyer 5000 and you're trying to sell me Ginsu knives. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm that's like, that's not me. That's not me. Yeah. yeah. That you don't want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. That's, right. that's then, right. Do you know the Instagram for the, the show for Kimberly? I think it's Akimbo Musical. Yes. So follow it. And if you guys yeah. are tuning in because you're a Steve Steven fan, Steve Steven, <laughs> uh, and you don't follow us, follow us at Survival Jobs Pod on Instagram and Twitter, on Facebook at Survival Jobs A Podcast. Shoot us an email at survivaljobspod at gmail.com. Thank you, Steven. Yeah. By the way, at the end of the episode, I have this question. Do you like going by Steve or Steven? Uh, I get this question a lot, and I I know that there are people that call me Steven, and most people I think call me Steve. I know there are people that do call me Steven, and in my brain, I don't even like, I, I don't even register, it's, 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 it's all the same to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, great. I'm glad we, we saved that for the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's... <laughs> It's such an interesting answer. So important. <laughs> but thank you so much. This was amazing. Everyone go see Kimberly Akimbo. What theater is it at? The booth. Back yes. to where it started. The Full booth. Circle. Wow. Amazing. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Much. We'll see you there. See you at the booth. <laughs> Meet us at the booth, guys. <laughs>